G'day everyone and uh, welcome back to the shop. Today I've got some new tools that I'd like to show you and uh, but why don't I bring the camera in so you can have a good look at them. So recently I reached out to Arthur over at Live Tools and inquired about the T-Shawn probe uh, that he sells from his uh, tooling establishment. And I didn't want to buy a brand new one so Artie actually said look I've got an exchange unit in stock. He goes I usually don't um, allow these to go out. But in your case, you know, you can purchase it from me at, at a good price. You may wonder why I went for a T-Shawn when I already have a perfectly good Hamer. This one here. Now the Hamer I currently use in my CNC machine. All right, and it's set up ready to go with a ER30 collet holder, um, a 45 degree pull stud in here, and I, all the tools are set up in relation to that. Now to use this hammer in my manual milling machine would require me to remo constantly remove and replace the pull stud and that's fraught with danger and I'm not going to do that, alright? Now, in a future video I'll go through some wobblers and you know this sort of style, okay? And we'll test a, a variety of them, you know, from the cheaper ones to the better vertex ones. Uh, that's one here that I've broken previously and repaired. Um, keep the old-fashioned wobblers. So with these are probes, as you know, probing uh, in your milling machine to find datum points and stuff like that, and even a good, better vertex one, right? And also the, the ball bearing type style here that I got off Doug Gray from DJ Graf uh, Drafting and Design. Let's open up this German-made uh, T-Shawn or Shawn uh, 3D tester or taster, whatever they say, how they pronounce it, 3D taster. Anyway, might be something to do with the English translation from German to English. And it comes with all the product detail information in here. And the first thing it's telling you that it's got a protective washer that you need to remove before you can use it, okay? Now, even though this is a refurbished item, it still comes packaged in the box and everything. It's been sent to T-Shawn, they've repaired it, um, they've recalibrated and sent it back out in, into the uh, wild blue yonder. And here's a little T-Shawn here. Notice that it won't move at the moment because I need to unscrew this and they come with this protective plastic washer here. And once I put it back on now and tighten that up, you can see that I've got movement here. And the good thing about this is that it's it's 3D, okay? So it works in the X, Y, and Z, okay? So in the X, in the Y, and Z, this one here. Now, in contrast to the Hamer, you'll notice that the Hamer actually needs to do one full revolution for one millimeter, all right? So as the Hamer comes around, that's one full millimeter to and then it starts going into the red. So it's overall it's got four millimeters of travel, but you usually stop at the zero, so you go around twice, and you want to be stopping there, okay? Now, with a Tishon, or Tishon, however you pronounce it, it's in, uh, in half a millimeter, okay? So 0 0.5, where the Hamer was 1.0. And as it goes around here, it goes around to half a mil, one mil, one and a half. It's roughly got about three mil of range where the Hamer's got four mil of range. So now if we look at this one here, now I've had this for a while, but I haven't done a video on it. So this was also from Arthur. He's a dealer for Farian, um, German made tooling. And in contrast to the Chinese ones, you won't believe it. It's um, definitely a nicer piece of kit. Um, I'm not sure, like you can tell from the steel they use, and no doubt we'll see this in the testing when I put it over in the milling machine and clock it up and just see what it looks like, all right? Now, to compare apples with apples, you're looking at a product that's probably three to four times dearer than the Chinese comparison, okay? And like I said previously, my manual milling machine is an ISO 30 spindle. However, BT30 will fit. The difference between ISO 30 and BT30 BT30 is usually the BT will have a pull stud in it where the ISO doesn't, okay? And sometimes they even have this indexing piece here 
where they can locate in the tool changer and go back in the correct orientation each time. All right. So with this Farion here, it's, it's actually a very nice piece of kit and you can see that it's been balanced, okay? Now I'd say it'd be balanced to either, I'd say it'd be balanced to 10 or 12,000 RPM and rated for that, all right? And of course, even the collet that comes with it is, uh, is a sexy piece of kit as well, right? And when you push it in there, it snaps in like you wouldn't believe where the Chinese one, and this is not having a dig at Chinese products, please don't think that at all. Uh, they serve a purpose, and you can see this ER32 collet just flops in like a, a dick in a shirt sleeve, all right? All righty, so let's go over to the milling machine and actually have a look at these collets, okay? I'll put a piece of 12 millimeter carbide in there, put a finger dial DTI on it, and just see now, and just see what the run out is in it, all right? And what I'll do then, I'll then put this in the Farion. And the reason I'm using the Farion is because it's a little bit shorter and I don't, and I'll, you know, I'll gain a little bit more Z height if I put it in this one. Down the track, I'd like to make my own tool holder just to hold this. Um, it doesn't have to be hardened and ground, it's just to hold this thing in here as long as it's, you clock it in concentric. And that's what I'll need to be doing soon is putting it in the milling machine and adjusting these four grub screws to get the run out at 100%. All right, let's go over and take a look at the difference in these collets. So in the spindle at the moment, I've got this cheaper uh, BT30 ER3270 collet. Now I've been running these in the CNC machines that I've owned over the years. And I've put a piece of 12 millimeter carbide up in there. And when I'm turning the spindle with this one here, I'm getting, now this is a jeweled uh, finger dial and it's jeweled to 0 0.01 of a millimeter so that's um, 10 micron and you can see here that I'm getting a deviation from 0 so that's about 20 micron so at the moment 0 0.02 run out in that collet that's not bad really considering that's a cheaper um, BT30 collet chuck that I got off eBay a long time ago and as I was saying BT30 I'll just come back a little bit here and up here BT30 ER3270 so let's try the Farion tool holder now with that 12mm carbide and just see if it changes at all all right I'll be surprised if it does righty I've got the Farion tool holder in here now now this is once again this is a BT30 uh, tool holder now keep in mind this milling machine really takes an ISO 30, however BT30 and ISO 30 will fit. The difference is one has a pull stud, one doesn't. Uh, BT30 needs a pull stud because it goes in the CNC machine. Now this Farron made in Germany is definitely better quality. Um, you can hold it in your hand, you can actually feel it. I know it's hard to believe, but it's a, a much better quality product. Now if I just pull this back a little bit. Okay, and I spin that now, like it's under 0 0.01 of a mil. Okay, so definitely an improvement going to a German made holder. I'd like to point out also that this holder has been balanced. Uh, I believe it's balanced at 10 or 12,000 RPM. All right, but once again, you've got to compare apples with apples, and the cost of this compared to the Chinese one, well, you know the story. So that's quite good, actually. I was quite pleased with that. I'll just bring that back again. It was quite hard here because I'm actually pulling on the belt. Yeah, look at that. That's, a that's actually about 5 micron. I'm very, very happy with that. Very surprised, to be honest with you. So there you go. It really uh, pays to buy quality, doesn't it? You can see I've got the probe up in the spindle in the Farian tool holder. Uh, it's got a 12 millimeter shank on it. 
Now there's four grub screws around the top ring here that you need to adjust, a bit like a four jaw chuck, to clock it in. If you have a look on my little finger dial here, you can see that it's running out at about yeah, one, oh, 0.13 of a millimetre. So I've got to adjust that and it's pretty hard to adjust it on camera here. So I'll, I'll have a bit of a tickle and I'll come straight back. A little bit of time on this, probably about five or ten minutes. And I'll just give you a bit of a look here at it. And now it's still moving, just a, a hair, but that's pretty darn close. All right, so I might fluff around with it a little bit more to get a bit more spot on, and then um, then we'll give it a test with the new DRO. Right, I'll show you just how quick and easy this thing is to use now. And what I'll do, I'll come over and probe this back left-hand corner. Uh, as you know, most of the times when we're milling, we always use the fixed jaw, not the sliding jaw. And we predominantly make the date in the left-hand back corner, but also we can also use the right-hand corner, which I use quite frequently as well. So it's really easy. Come on over. All right, and what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use my feed handle because it's just a bit hard with the camera in the road at the moment. And I'm going to clock that in that corner in there. To find that corner. Now I've got to look around here. We can click clear X on the DRO. Bring the job back, bring the job over and across back into Y. Okay, and clear Y. And that's how simple it is. Back it off. Now I'll wind my handle up. And I can find my zero, zero point. And there it is there, we found that edge of the, the job. Now, later on too, we can also store tool lengths in here. So if I had a variety of tool holders, I could actually do their length offset, pretty much similar to what I do in the CNC machine. However, that's a little bit uh, more technical for this video. But I just wanted to show you off the new tools that I got. So this is the refurbished T-Shawn and the brand new Farian tool holder. And um, very, very happy with it indeed. And this will make setups uh, a lot quicker. Well, there we have it, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, I hope you found it interesting. Uh, I always wanted one of these for the manual mill. And uh, like I said, I had one for the CNC, but I didn't want to swap them over. Uh, next week, I'll try and do a run out on this uh, Ditron D80 um, DRO that I put on the manual milling machine, and it's fully finished now. I've done all the uh, all the wiring and everything and tied it all off properly so it doesn't get kinked. I still need to put an apron on down over here, okay? Uh, well, not an apron, a way cover or something like that, but I'll get some rubber from a rubber company here and just refit that because it's getting rubbish down there. And uh, yeah, then hopefully I can start making parts again and uh, this is really gonna save time. So anyway, till next time, thank you. And um, once again, I appreciate your support and I uh, appreciate you following me, thank you. Cheers, bye-bye. Houston, we have a problem. The special tool that they give you, guess what? When I put this in here and tighten it up, I can't get it off, all right? So I'm screwed. Anyway, I'll work something else out.